Namaste everyone and welcome. So Namaste. So we're gonna do our Friday emotional healing. So before we start, let's ask for divine blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, and Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally to my teacher, Master Chakok Sui Mahaguji Mailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love, guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. Right, so for emotional healing, you know, one of the suggestions was uh, how to release this sense of unworthiness to be loved. And we usually don't think about it, but it's a subconscious thing that runs in the background, like, hey, you know, we're not good enough to be loved, or well, we've screwed up. I mean, who hasn't, right? So sometimes that acts as a thought form that sits in the aura, and even though when someone, you know, you give love, and someone wants to be caring and loving to you, you are afraid to accept it. And that's usually a block on the solar plexus, okay? It's on the solar plexus chakra. The solar plexus chakra is the chakra of love for oneself. The heart chakra is love for other people. So what happens is you could have a big, very big heart. Of course, not like an enlarged heart, you know what I mean. The heart chakra is big, so you're always very caring and very loving. When somebody wants to reciprocate, you don't want to take anything. Part of it is because of religious upbringing, you know, it's always better to give than to receive. And we talked about that, about that before, that doesn't make any sense. It's just like saying, I'm going to keep exhaling and never inhaling. Now, the other part of it is also the imbalance between the heart and the solar plexus. So when the solar plexus is very, very, very small, the heart is very, very big, like huge, and so solar plexus like this, you give, you give, you give, but the solar plexus, you don't want to receive. Now, the opposite is also true. When the heart is very small, the heart the soul plexus chakra is very big, guess what happens? You don't want to give, you just want to take. Everything is about me. Everything is about how good I am. Everything is about, okay, uh, what am I entitled to? And I know you keep hearing me saying this. I see that a lot in social media. Everything is about me, I, what do I deserve? What do I want? What do I this? So that's an extreme also. What you want is a balance between the two. Now, if you're on the spiritual path, a better configuration, if you will, is the way, the way my teacher answered, uh, told us. He said, the heart chakra is big, the solar plexus is slightly smaller. Okay? Not that they're even. You don't want that. I'll explain in a minute. So heart chakra is big, you're, you're very living, you're living, you're very giving, very loving, very generous. Your, heart, your soul plexus is slightly smaller. The question is why? Because that's part of your self-worth. You see, you give, you give, you give, but the law of karma comes back to you. Everything. I mean, again, I always say this. It's the law of karma, not your opinion of karma. <laughs> okay? So, as you give and share, this energy will come back to you. If your soul plexus is small and you don't want to receive, it gets stuck. So, you will notice that your ability to give also diminishes. So, giving and receiving are actually two sides of the same coin. So, you learn to give, you learn to be loving, caring. At the same time, when people want to care for you or people want to reciprocate, you have to accept it, which will empower you to be able to give more. Common sense. You don't need to go to the Himalayas and study this. It's just to make sure that when you exhale, you also have to inhale. That's it. It's just that when you're on the spiritual path, you kind of adjust it a little bit, like you're giving slightly more than you're taking. But in the end, it kind of flows by itself and reconfigures itself. So when you're on the spiritual path, when you give, you share, you're very caring, you're very loving, your heart chakra expands. Okay? And that energy flows through you, become more loving, the heart chakra gets bigger, you know, it's, it's a compounding effect. Now, as the good karma also comes back, or at the same time people reciprocating towards you, they say, no, 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 I don't want it. They just say, oh, thank you, thank you. And knowing in your mind that what? You're just gonna, whatever you take, it will just empower you to give more. That's the life of a disciple, a spiritual practitioner. I know some of you were brought up just like me, like, oh, don't expect anything back. Uh, always give and never receive anything. That doesn't make sense. But that's what we were taught. Right? So what happens? We always have guilt. Guilt is a byproduct of this subconscious unworthiness to receive or just stupid programming from the past that we're not supposed to receive. <laughs> it's one of the two. Regardless, the problem is the soul plexus chakra. So if you keep that in mind, you know, when you're giving, you're sharing, and people reciprocate, you say, thank you. 
And then in your mind, you go, okay, thank you. How can I increase and multiply this that I receive so I can give more? So when that happens, you have a balanced life. You learn to give, you learn to receive, you get to do service, you get to have a happy and prosperous life. What else do you want? See, part of the problem is most people think spirituality equals suffering, which is dumb. <laughs> think about it. People have this perception growing up that, oh, to be spiritual means you have to suffer. You have to give up being happy. You have to give up being prosperous. That's pure nonsense. You've been watching too many movies <laughs> of always the, the poor person's going to heaven and the rich person is like barbecuing in hell, right? Or you look at the stories of saints in the, in the, in the past. Many saints in many religions. What happens? They always show that the, oh, the saint is always poor, the, oh, the, the saint is always struggling. That's a choice they made. <laughs> you get my point? That's a choice they made. And you have to also understand it in context on the conditions of spiritual disciples at that time. It doesn't equal uh, you want to be successful, uh, you, have to be, you want to be spiritual, you have to get poor. I don't know about you, but I never read that before. And besides, think about it. If you have a good heart and you really want to help people, uh, it's going to be hard to help people if you can help. You can't even help yourself. But if you're prosperous, you got money, you got resources, you can help more people. Case in point: uh, Last night I was talking to Tony, Tony Robbins. You know this this UPW event this weekend, which by the way, uh, twenty thousand people. In, uh, from 129 countries. So that's what we're going to do meditation Sunday with. We're going to do meditation to enhance with that many people. Well, actually, it's going to be more because 20,000 connections, two, three people on each screen, mm, easy 60,000 people. Anyway, I was talking to Tony last night and um, you know, speaking of giving and receiving, you know, he's very prosperous, his life is good, but he has very high goals, not just for himself, but especially of service. So his goal was. I think still is, 1 billion people fed in 10 years. 1 billion, with a B. And last night he said, uh, we had a schedule. Uh, his organization has already given enough to feed 700 million people. Okay, let's put it in proper perspective. If you're broke and you're begging for money in the corner, you can't even feed yourself uh, compared to somebody who has the resources of, you know, hundreds of millions to be able to feed that many people. I think you got the point. Clear? So this thing, this perception of giving and receiving is so important that a lot of spiritual practitioners who do not understand it are suffering unnecessarily, part one, part two, and it prevents them from really living their spiritual destiny because they really want to serve others. That's a practical truth. Now, when it comes to relationship and emotional healing, it's the same thing. You love someone, you care for them, they want to reciprocate, there's the guilt inside of you, no, 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 I'm only here to give. Well, guess what happens? At some point, that thing will break down. So, emotional healing for unworthiness to receive, have, uh, it's very important that you first understand the concept or the movement of energy. You give, it you receive. You give, you receive. Once you understand this, you will also understand like, yeah, feeling unworthy to receive doesn't make much sense. Because whether I like it or not, that energy that comes towards me, the only thing left is my choice to receive it or not. And if it doesn't, it just builds up and nothing happens. Make sense? And so <clears throat> if, you do, if you feel like you don't, we're not worthy to receive, unworthy to be loved, then you ask yourself, okay, if I keep feeling unworthy to be loved, so I end up not loving myself, why am I going to have the love to give other people? It's a chain reaction. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, you know, this has to do with love, emotion. How come you're making it so mental, so cerebral? Because if you keep being emotional about it, you go nowhere. Because emotions will always want drama. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm not worthy. Oh, yeah, but I want to love people. And then you're all over the place. Never get anywhere. The key is to use the higher principle 
to control the lower principle. So if the emotions is a mess, you rise to the mental level, be able to have clarity to look down at the lower level and fix it. If mentally it's full of confusion, you can't think clearly, guess what? You go to the intuitive level and the spiritual level. Make sense? You always go to the next frequency to control the frequency below. I know that's even more cerebral, but anyway, that's the point. That's why you notice somebody's emotionally upset. At that time, no matter how much you reason to them, they're not listening because they're stuck in the emotional world. Now, true, you want to make them understand, but at that point, they're like swimming in that crap, in that mud. So what do you do? You back off, let the emotional body calm down, and immediately come in and say, by the way, you know, I know you were upset earlier, but these are the circumstances. This is what you should do, blah, 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 so on, so on. Since their emotional body has calmed down, then the mental faculty can come in and give clarity and then seep down and regulate the emotional body. You said, now what you do when you go to a counselor? You go to a psychiatrist, a psychologist, psychiatrist, a counselor, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. People who help you with your emotions. What do you do? You sit there and they listen to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You vent, you vent, and afterwards they talk to you. Well, okay, how about they ask you questions? It makes you think. So it triggers the heart chakra up to the throat, to the crown. You know, It goes higher to be able to regulate the emotions. So this thing about feeling unworthy to be loved, we can say, yeah, but you know, you don't understand. Neither. Then it'll just be a venting session. be a complete waste of time. But if I let you understand, I say, okay, okay, you can be angry and upset. You can be not feeling worthy. That's fine. Let me just hold on to that. Let me try to understand this first. Most people go, yeah, the, the, okay, that, that doesn't make sense. Get the idea? That's why we're approaching it this way. We're making you understand the energetic aspect, the karmic aspect, the spiritual aspect, the movement of energy. At some point, if you still want to stay in your mud, well, you're the problem. <laughs> right? Think about it. If after everything has been explained to you and you understood it and you still choose to suffer, then it's the choice you made. That's that. I know that sounds cold, but it is what it is. You can't handle it? No. What can I do? Suffering is literally your choice. But most people with any form of common sense or intelligence would say, yeah, it kind of doesn't make sense, huh? So once that is, once that decision is made, guess what happens? Then the awareness goes up. So every time they're feeling, yeah, you know, people love me, but I don't feel worthy. Wait, wait, wait. That doesn't make any sense. Besides, I really care for people. I really want to serve people. So if I don't accept love because I don't feel like I'm worthy for whatever stupid reason, then that will prevent me from loving people more. Oh, okay, forget that crap. That conversation happens like that. It becomes an algorithm in your head. And guess what happens? Then you move forward in the, in, the, in the right direction. Simple. The key is to understand. That's why I'll cross-reference this and we'll do our meditation. This coming weekend, is this weekend? No, next weekend, I'm teaching Spiritual Essence of Man, the inverted tree of life, the chakras inverted tree of life. You know the tree of life, the Kabbalistic system? This one here is called, you know, in Sanskrit it's called Ajna, right? In the tree of life it's called uh, Bina, understanding. And you notice it's right up there. And that Bina, that understanding, is actually the one that controls your other chakras. And that's why oftentimes, when you're angry, you're upset, you're losing it emotionally, a lot of times it's out of fear and out of the fear of the unknown, or you just don't know what's going to happen. But once you understand it, ah, oh, okay, so that's what happened. Hmm. So once you have that understanding, Bina, then you start calming down because this guy controls this guy. This is emotional will, solar plexus. This is mental or intelligent will. This one will test this guy. Okay, you calm down. So this mental will start thinking, okay, that is the condition. Are, those are the circumstances. Those, that's the situation. How do we fix it? How do we get out of it? How do we make this better? Then it becomes dynamic, active intelligence. Make sense? So that's that. That's how energy works. All right, let's do our meditation. So sit comfortably. I hope you have your salt water bucket beside you. If you don't, uh, just visualize. Um, just imagine. Let's do it this way. Imagine your feet are in salt water. Like you're at the beach. 
your feet uh, up to your knees in salt water. It's not as good as to actually have salt water, but for now, it helps purify, okay? So let's do our affirmation. Put your hand like this. Let's ask for blessing first. To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, personally to my teacher, Master Tsuha Kok Sui, Mahaguru Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you for all your blessings. In full faith, so it is. Okay, put your hand like this. Just make sure that everything's uh, streaming well. All right. Because I'm borrowing uh, a dear friend's house, so <laughs> I to really set up real fast. Okay. I am that. I am. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion. I'm not the thoughts. I am the soul. I, the soul, am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that. The soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit, the divine spark in me. I am a child of God. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Okay, just be still. Just be still. Inhale, exhale slowly. And open your hands in blessing. Just say we are one. Now visualize the earth in front of you. We'll do the meditation twin hearts as taught to us by my teacher, Grandmaster Chokok Sui. Be aware of your heart in your hands. Just say our hearts are one. Our souls are one. So be aware of your heart in your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Let's recall people who are having challenges and difficulties in their life, be it physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, or they're having relationship issues. Visualize their lives turning around, blessing them with a new hope and with faith and a better life. So be it. So be it. So be it. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Where there is sadness, let me sow joy. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Bless every person we being on earth with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and joy. So be it. Just be still and let it flow through you. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. And stay there. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Just be aware of your crown in your hands. Fill the earth with golden light. You can start by filling your family, your entire household with beautiful golden light. Transmuting any anger, resentment, and negativity. Let it spread to your friends, your loved ones, and your workplace. Fill them with golden light. Transmute any negative emotion into light. Then let it spread to the city, the state, the country, the surrounding areas, and let it fill the entire earth. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with loving kindness. May all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. Let all be blessed without exception. So be it. So be it. Just be still. Just be aware of your crown and keep filling the earth with peace, with love and kindness. Now, gently be aware of your heart and your crown at the same time. Take a deep breath. 
project even brighter golden light towards the earth. And just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all sentient beings in every dimension, every direction, above and below, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Just fill the earth with peace, love, and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace, <clears throat> with inner healing. At this time, for many physical and financial healing and relationship healing. And of course, emotional and mental healing. May all be blessed with inner peace, joy. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, and the willingness to do good. So be it. To increase the amount of loving energy flowing through us, which has a healing effect on us as well as the entire earth, we will chant Om Mani Padmi Hum, the mantra of mercy and compassion. So gently be aware of your heart and your crown. Just fill the earth with golden light and chant with me. Om Mani Padme Hum seventh one just listen just keep your tongue in your palate and make yourself super super receptive still just let the blessings keep flowing through our hands now gently lower your hands on your lap keep your tongue on your palate keep your eyes closed imagine a beautiful golden flame floating above your crown and be aware of your heart, send a stream of love from your heart up to the crown and into that golden flame. <sighs> and stay there. Your entire awareness is now inside that beautiful golden flame. You're not the body, you're not the emotion, you're not the thoughts. You are the soul, the spiritual self, a being of pure energy and light. That is your true nature. Awaken to who you really are. Made in the image of God. Be still and listen. Oh.
Allow your awareness to drift deeper and deeper into that golden flame. And inside you see yourself in an ocean of golden light. You're like a droplet of light in that ocean of golden light. Enter it. Become it. And listen. Oh. simply let go and let things be now. Maintain your stillness and awareness. Just be still. The liquid divine energy is now pouring down to your crown. Your crown chakra is being cleansed. Any negative thoughts, negative energies are disintegrated, extracted, expelled down into the salt water below you. That beautiful ocean of salt water. Or the salt water next to you, whichever one. All these negative energies are flushed into the salt water now and down into the earth. The liquid divine energy is entering your forehead, your ajna, and your back head chakras. All negative thoughts and emotions, negative energies, any energies of unworthiness to be loved in any of these chakras are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in near salt water or violet fire. The liquid divine energy is entering your throat center. Your throat chakras are being cleansed. Any negative thoughts are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in near salt water or violet fire. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to the back of your heart, in between your shoulder blades, filling your entire front and back heart with waves of love, sweetness, joy, and ananda, divine bliss. Just be still. Let it permeate your entire astral body or emotional body. Feeling with love, with sweetness, with kindness. So be it. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to your front solar plexus and back solar plexus. It's going deep, deep into your front and back solar plexus, disintegrating, dissolving any energies of unworthiness to be loved. Any of these energies, thoughts, emotions are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the nearest salt water or violet fire next to you. So be it. Just be receptive. Om. Disintegrate. Just be still. More divine energies entering your front back solar plexus, permeating to your lower astral body, dissolving, disintegrating any negative thoughts, negative emotions, any energies of unworthiness to be loved, any anger, resentment, dissolved, disintegrated, completely flush out of your system. 
this near salt water now, so be it. It's also cleansing your liver and your spleen centers. The liquid divine energy is cleansing your navel, your sex center. It's pouring down your spine, cleansing your entire spine and all the way down to the basic chakra. Your basic chakras are being cleansed. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to your entire body, permeating your arms, your legs, and your feet. Just be still and listen. Om. 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 Needs negative energy, just cut this energy, extract it, expel it. Just be still. Oh. Be still and let it keep flowing. Just repeat after me, I'm letting go. I'm completely letting go of anything of thoughts and emotions. Any energies of unworthiness to receive love are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted out of my system now. So be it. These feelings, these thoughts are not me. These are not I. Be gone. Cut. Just be still. Keep your tongue in your palate. Just let it flow out of your body. Now repeat after me, I completely, deeply, permanently accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energies now, so be it. Say it. I completely, deeply, permanently, gratefully accept all the divine healing energies on all levels now, so be it. Again, I completely, deeply, permanently, gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energy and the divine blessings, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, and physically on all levels, so be it. We thank you. Okay, just be still. Now raise your hands in blessing. Let's release excess energy. This part is to release excess energy plus as you bless all the negative thoughts and emotions that are just halfway out of your aura that's on the surface will also get flushed out, okay? So visualize the earth in front of you. Be aware of your hands and your feet. Let the entire earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let the entire earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to all. So just fill the entire earth with light, with love, and with power. So be it. You may also aim your hands down. Be aware of your hands, your feet, and the base of your spine. Project golden light down deep into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Thank you. Personally, to my teacher, Master Chahoksui Mahaguji Wing. Thank you. In full faith. And so it is. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the meditation. You should feel a lot lighter, and you should notice that your mind is very quiet, your emotions are very calm. So it's a short meditation. I mean, the concept is quite simple. When you do meditation to heart, you activate the heart and crown, allowing more divine energy to come down and flow through your body. We're just aiming that hose in specific chakras with the intention of releasing certain negative energies. That's that simple. So tonight, or in seven hours and... 24 minutes, we'll do prosperity healing, okay? Uh, that schedule should be set. Again, I have responsibilities here. If anything changes, uh, we'll let you know. Like last Monday, we had to move it an hour later because uh, I have to attend to certain things. Other than that, um, if you don't hear from me, then it's going to be 
9 p.m. East Coast time and 6 p.m. California time and wherever you are you just calculate all right and uh, just a quick announcement so if you're if you have a US address the spiritual essence of man class is next weekend and for the ones who have not taken the prerequisite of uh, practicing self-healing Chandan Paramswar is teaching that uh, this coming week so just go to masterco.org and the information is there all right and uh, for some of you who are new the spiritual essence of man is just mind-blowing you can study the Kabbalah and a lot of different traditions of tree of life from all over the world but this book and this class even when I messaged your thought it just blew my mind it allows you to understand the 11 major centers or separate the tree of life and 11 major chakras not only have physical functions they have psychological functions spiritual functions can be used for emotional healing relationship healing everything so if you're ready to be uh, <laughs> to explode with information and technique and experience will come to class if you can't handle it well don't <laughs> because I have a tendency to overdo everything and especially in that class we pour it on you're gonna be doing at least 10 meditations in that class and you know when I say meditation it's not one of those be quiet be still no we crank it up and we add special sauce all right so other than that namaste everyone you all take care and um, we will see you in seven hours something. Okay, God bless. Bye-bye.